Welcome to our development facility. Let me show you where the magic happens. This is our main hologram projection system. I'm going to step you through each part of it. Normally in real production, light covers are on in place. We work under red safe light conditions. But so that you can see how this works, we've taken the covers off so you can see all of the equipment. And we're working in room lights so you can see me. The system is built on a vibration isolation table. So all of this is air mounted. This is true holography, which means it's vibration sensitive. So in the production system here, where we make the holograms, it's important that we have good vibration isolation. Our technology works by printing a hologram in a system such as this, but the hologram itself is very easy to use. You just put it on the light box to look at it. All of the complexity, all of the sophistication is here in the production system. Uh, let me talk you through how it works. I have a piece of film here. This is a, a scrap. We'll have fogged it with the room light. This film goes on a platen here. It's held in place by a suction pump from the back. This is the film that will contain the hologram that we're going to record. The system starts with a powerful, very high precision science grade laser. The light from that, which is the green light you can see, that light passes through a shutter and then through a beam splitter which breaks the light into two beams. One of those beams folds back towards the laser into a beam expander. That beam then expands across the table, shining uh, onto this lens here. The light from that lens then propagates through this space to my piece of film. And if, if that was all was happening, that would just fog the film and nothing would happen. So the other beam is really important. The other beam from the beam splitter proceeds down the table into this system here. It folds around and it goes into essentially a, a high resolution laser video projector. What that does is project one image, one slice through our three-dimensional data set, so a slice of a patient's brain, a slice of a patient's uh, hips, onto a screen here, a rear projection screen. And that's what we record a hologram of. So it's all under computer control. Normally this would happen automatically. I'm going to tell the computer to do some manual steps for us. So this is a slice through a patient's hip, in this case a CT scan of a patient's hip. With everything set up, as I say, with the covers on and the, the lights out, the system would position itself like this, the shutters open, and we record a hologram, a true hologram, of this slice of the patient data at this distance from the film. Here's how that works. The light coming in from the side is a simple, pure, what's called a reference beam. Uh, it floods across the whole film and would uniformly illuminate it. The light coming from the screen here, which has the image of the, of the slice of the patient embedded in it, scatters through this space to the film. At the film, the two beams recombine. They started out from the laser, at the film they recombine, and they form a standing wave, a fixed pattern of interference fringes. This happens at an incredibly high resolution. Uh, we're talking about the wavelength of light, so submicron. That pattern is recorded in the film, and that pattern contains all of the three-dimensional information. So it contains the position of each pixel and the brightness of each pixel in this image, but also the distances from the film. As you see, as the system operates, how it works is that the screen moves gradually from position to position, different depths within the patient, essentially. And at each position, the correct data for that position of the patient is recorded on this film with the screen giving you the XY content of the data and the screen's position giving you the Z uh, position within the patient. All of those slices are recorded on the one film. When we then process that film and look at it, we see all of the slices reassembled in three-dimensional space. This is, again, a true hologram, classic uh, Dennis Gabor style hologram. I'm going to actually start it running and uh, point out some of the details. 
So the computer is now driving the screen forwards to the first position for the first slice of this patient. From here on it's automatic, I've told it to start. So the computer fetches the CT scan for the first slice of this patient, projects it onto the screen, the shutters open, and we record a hologram of that slice of patient data at that distance. For each separate slice, the screen is moving back a few millimeters, corresponding to the distance between the CT slices in the patient, and recording the next slice of data at that greater depth. So as we run through the data set, as we run through the patient, this screen moves in Z, recording each slice in its correct relative position. There's a lot else going on. There's about 14,000 lines of software controlling this, and it does about 4,000 equations full of maths before it starts. So it is fine-tuning the relative powers of the beams, the duration of each exposure. All of this is calculated based on calibrations of the system and based on content of the data. It's fully automatic, so the operator just pieces, places a piece of film in place, and uh, the computer does all the work thereafter. This is our film processor. It gives us high quality, consistent results. Let me show you inside. Film enters at this end, passes through a developer, a wash, a photographic bleach, a final wash, and then a hot air dryer comes out here. Five minutes dry to dry processing.